Greetings everybody and welcome to Gizmo Labs where I show you all the tips and tricks you need to become a pro at Grounded Playgrounds. In this episode we're going to be looking at the timer gizmo and essentially we're going to be covering all the features of how it works and how you can use it in some example setups. So without any further ado, let's get started! First thing we're going to go ahead and do is have a look at all of the customization options that you can use with the timer. Let's go ahead and first of all put down a light or something so we can see exactly how the timer works and then we're going to go ahead and talk about what options you can go ahead and enable. Let's go ahead and put one of these lamps down next to our timer and we're going to go ahead and set a link from this timer to our light just like this. Now the timer will only fire a signal down this link once the time has completely elapsed. So if you go ahead and start your timer, it has to wait till it's finished before it will go ahead and fire a signal down here. Now you can see it will say when the time has elapsed, you can then go ahead and do whatever you want. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as to toggle the light. So if the light is off, it will turn on. And if the light is on, it will go ahead and turn off. Let's go ahead and see what this is going to do. So first of all, we're going to go and enter play mode and you'll see that currently nothing happens. But after a few seconds have passed, you can see it's then gone ahead and fired a signal down to go ahead and turn this light on. So let's go ahead and have a look why that is. If we go and look at our timer, we're going to go ahead and press the G key just like this. Now, a really useful thing to turn on when you're testing your timers is to go ahead and turn this bottom option on here, which is show while playing. So we're going to go ahead and do this and you'll see then that when I get in, when I come out of here and go back into play mode, it'll go ahead and show a little ring here to tell you when the timer is about to be elapsed. And you can see when it's done, it will go ahead then and then turn the light on. So these are really, these are really, really useful if you need to go ahead and have your timer visible while in play mode. And for some designs, you might actually want that to, for example, give the player an idea of when their time is nearly up, for example, in a longer setup. Let's go ahead and have a look at all these other options. The first one is the time option. So the time option essentially means how long the timer is going to go for before it goes ahead and fires a signal. You can start and set it down to a minimum of one second and you can go ahead and set it to a maximum of 60 seconds. Now there is a way to make longer timers and we're going to go ahead and cover that in a little bit. But first of all, let's just go ahead and set it down to one second and then we're going to enter play mode. This time what you should see is we go ahead and get a second timer. That that fills up within a second and then the light goes ahead and turns on. The next option here is we have a start on play option right here. Now, by default, the timer will always have this enabled. And it means that whenever you enter play mode or say whenever someone's downloaded your map and they start up your world, the timer, any timer with this start on play option is just going to automatically start. But sometimes you don't actually want that to happen. If you don't want that to happen, just go ahead and disable this option right here. And you'll see now that if I go ahead and go into play mode, you'll see that nothing is happening. That circle has no longer appeared and the timer has not started. So how do we go ahead and start a timer? Well, the easiest thing you can go ahead and do is set up some kind of switch or trigger volume to go ahead and get the timer going. So for example, if I was to go ahead and say, put down a button right next to our timer, and I guess I'll just put it like kind of in front of it here, we can go ahead and link our button to our timer just like this. Now you can see that when a link comes from the button to the timer, we also get some options when the button is pressed. By default, this will be set to toggle timer. Now you're going to want to be very careful with the toggle timer option because the way it works is you'd usually think, okay, well, if the timer is currently running, it will stop the timer. And if the timer has already stopped, it will restart the timer. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work like that. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that for you right now. So what we should find is if I go into play mode now, I'm going to go ahead and press this button and this should go ahead because the timer is currently stopped, it will start the timer, right? And as you can see, it goes ahead and does it and it finishes the timer there. However, if I go ahead and press the button again, now that the timer has currently stopped, well, this should go ahead and start the timer and trigger the light to turn off, right? Well, I press the button, but as you can see, it didn't actually start the timer. It actually reset the timer. So toggle timer works in a bit of a different way in if the timer has elapsed, one press will reset the timer and then two presses will then go ahead and start the timer again. So you can see now that it's stopped, I'll go ahead and reset the timer and then it will start. Now, if you go ahead and stop the timer partway through, for example, 
it will go ahead and actually remove it and then I'll start the timer again and then you can see that when I press it like that, it actually goes ahead and restarts the timer if you stop the timer part way through. So the way toggle timer works is kind of ambiguous and it can take a bit of time to understand it. But let's go ahead and make a longer timer just so we can see how this works a little bit more. Let's go ahead and set this to five seconds so we can see what happens. And we'll go ahead and count through the timer to see how we go. So here we go. So we've gotten set this to five seconds now. And I'll go through this one more time. So if I just start the timer and let it run, you'll see that it goes ahead and takes five seconds. And at the end of those five seconds, the light turns on. Now the timer is finished and it's also stopped. But because the timer is finished and this link can set the to toggle timer, if I press the button once, it will actually go ahead and set the time back to zero and it won't actually kick off the timer a second time. So what we're gonna do now is we also want to go ahead and make it start the timer again. And you can see that once again, it will go ahead, count down through five seconds and it will then turn the light off. And then if we press the button again, it will reset the timer, but not start it. Now, if we stop the timer halfway through, so say if we go one, two, and we stop it about three seconds in, you can see that the timer actually just gets turned off and reset, right? And then if we go ahead and press it again, it's gonna go ahead and have to wait the full five seconds before it goes ahead and activates and goes like that. So toggle timer works in a bit of a weird way, but let's go ahead and do some other examples with some buttons that start and stop the timer so you can see the difference in how these work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two buttons this time, and I'm gonna have one button that starts the timer, and we're gonna set this one to start just like this, and then we're gonna have another button that goes ahead and stops the timer just like that. I'm also gonna color this button in green or something different just so it's a bit easier to see that there's a difference between them. And now let's go ahead and see how this behavior works. You'll see now that if I press the start timer button, it will go ahead and keep it going. And then once the timer has elapsed, it will go ahead and then turn the light on. If I press start timer again, it will both reset and start the timer. So unlike toggle timer, it actually does both things. And as you can see, then the light goes ahead and turns off. Now, if I press start timer twice, you'll see that the UI does refresh, but this light will actually turn on before the UI finishes. I think that's actually a bit of a bug with the UI, but if you fire two start timer events, it will not go ahead and reset the timer at all. So it does look like it will in the UI, but it actually doesn't. So you have to be careful because what we'll do, let's do it again. I'll press the button first. So about three seconds have passed now. I'll press it again. We should have five seconds, but there you go. Two seconds passed and that light turned off, even though this UI wasn't quite finished yet. So start timer does not reset the timer if you trigger it more than once. If the timer is just running, essentially start timer will just do nothing unless you've got the UI thing here, in which case it will fire at the UI. And as I said, I think that's actually a bit of a bug with the current version of timers. So this is one area where the UI for the timer might mislead you very slightly. Let's go ahead and start the timer again and this time I'm going to go ahead and say stop timer. Now you can see that the stop timer has gone ahead and just turned everything off. Now if I press start timer again is this thing going to go ahead and fill out before the timer ends? No, it's not. Stop timer will also reset the timer as well. So if you essentially want to go ahead and stop the timer part way through Unfortunately, there is not a way that you can do that. Stop timer will go ahead and set the time back to zero. And then when you press start timer again, it will go ahead and then it will just, you know, it'll go ahead and then it will continue from zero. So you'll have to wait the full length of time before the action happens. So we'll do it one more time. So I'll press start timer. I'll wait for about three seconds and I'll press stop timer. Now, if we press start timer again, you'll see that I actually start from zero and I have to wait the full five seconds before the light goes ahead and turns off. So at this point, there is no way to stop a timer midway through. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other options that are available from the timer as well. Another option is to have a delay time before the timer actually begins. Now, currently, we've not got our timer as a repeating timer. So essentially, if you add a delay timer, you can add it up to 30 seconds of delay. It will go ahead and wait that amount of time before starting the timer. And essentially, this and this time just get added together. So it will add the 30 seconds to that five seconds, and then it will go ahead and do something. If I go ahead and set this to, say, two seconds, for example, and we'll go ahead and start this again, I'll go ahead and press this button. You'll see that we wait for two seconds, then the UI will go ahead and show up, 
and then you can see it will go ahead and do the action. We'll do it again. So it will go ahead and wait two seconds and then the UI will restart. If we stop the timer again and then try it again, you'll see that I will still have to go ahead and wait the two seconds. But this time there was a bit of weird behavior. When I stopped the timer then, you can see that the, the light still actually went off. So you can see that if I now trigger a stop timer, you'll see that if I go ahead and start the timer again, something weird will actually go ahead and happen. Now, I don't know why this happens again, but just know that the start delay timer can also trigger a few weird results. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on this to add time to your timer unless you know exactly what you're doing. Um, so yeah, this is again has a bit of a weird interaction. So use the start delay timer only in certain situations. And I'll tell you a good situation where that is useful is if we actually have a repeating timer. If we turn on the repeat option, and we're gonna go ahead and put this down to one second. Essentially what the repeat option is gonna go ahead and do is it's gonna make it repeat every unit of time that you set in this top option here. So currently this means this timer is going to repeat every second. So if I go ahead and start the timer now, what we should see is it'll go ahead and repeat every second just like that, which is awesome. Now, this is where the start delay time is actually useful for repeating timers because if you go ahead and say you set the start delay timer to five seconds, in a single use timer, usually you would have five seconds plus one second and then it'd be six seconds. Now, what the start delay time does is it only applies to the very first repeat. After that, it doesn't apply at all. So it'll only apply to the first one. And then after that, it will go ahead and then repeat every second. So if you watch it now, we'll go ahead and press it. And you can see that we have to wait about five seconds. And then it's going to go ahead and then repeat the timer every single second. So that start delay time only occurs the first time. Now, if I go ahead and turn the timer off like this, and then I go ahead and then press the button one more time, you can see that then because I've stopped the timer and then restarted it, that will go ahead and then do it only for the first one. So the start delay time only happens when you trigger the start timer to go ahead and turn on with a button or some other trigger volume. You, you can also do that as well if you go ahead and have the timer start on play. So if the timer also starts on play, this time I don't need to press any buttons, you can see that it's gonna wait five seconds and then every second after that, it's gonna go ahead and trigger the light to turn on and turn off. So as you can see, there's quite a, a few useful things that you can do with timers. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you some handy tricks on what you can go ahead and do with these. For the first example, I have four gizmos right here. I have a button, a speaker, a timer, and I have a laser cannon. Now, the situation is this. I want, to laser, I want to fire this laser cannon once we press this button, but I also want to give the player a warning before the laser cannon goes ahead and fires. So how can we go ahead and do that? Now, usually what we could do is go ahead and link the button to the speaker, and then we can go ahead and link the button directly to the laser, right? Now, when the button is linked to the speaker, it's gonna go ahead and activate it. And when it's gone ahead and linked to the laser, it's also gonna go ahead and activate that. Now, without, uh, without a timer, let's go ahead and set a, uh, a warning sound as well. So let's make some kind of, some kind of uh, thing that we can do. Maybe there's like mechanisms, maybe like a, well, let's, let's go and do an error beep. There we go. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a, we got like a bit of an alarm kind of sound here going on. And we'll set this to a large range like this so we can hear a bit better. And you can see that when we press this button, it's going to go ahead and play this and fire this at the same time. So if I go ahead and demonstrate that, I'll play this. And you can see that it went ahead and fired at the same time before before the alarm actually was able to completely finish. So unfortunately, the player didn't get any warning that the laser was actually going to fire. So let's go ahead and fix that so that this alarm plays. It lasts about two seconds and then this laser goes ahead and fires. In order to do that, we're going to go ahead and take our signal out linking our button to our laser and we're going to go and link it into our timer. Now for the link to the timer, we're just going to go ahead and tell this to start the timer and then we're going to go ahead and take a link from our timer and link it to this laser. And we're gonna say once the timer has elapsed, it's gonna go ahead and activate the laser. Finally, for our timer here, we're gonna set the time to probably about three seconds, just to give ourselves a bit of a warning here. And then we're gonna leave everything else off just like this, because we don't want the timer to be visible. We don't want it to fire a laser every three seconds. We just want it to fire once, and we don't want to have any delay. And we also don't want this to start when the game loads. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. And now what we should do is if we go ahead and try it now, you'll see we get a warning. 
and then it goes ahead and fires a laser. So you can use a timer to go ahead and set a delay between a warning and an action just like that. Timers are also really good for controlling how often a player can go ahead and press a button to make something happen. In this case, I've got four components here. I've got a button, a counter with a condition, a timer, and I've also got an effect spawner. Now, the situation is this. I want it to happen that when the player presses a button, it's only going to trigger this effect spawner every few seconds, rather than going ahead and allowing the player to spam the button. Normally, if you link the button directly to the effect spawner just like this, and then go into play mode, what will happen is if I go ahead and press it, you can see that I can essentially spam this button, and I'll be able to go ahead and make this effect play as many times as I like. But what if we wanted to control the rate of which the player has to press this button to make sure that they can't go ahead and spam it? And if they do try and spam it, nothing happens. The first thing we're going to do is link our button straight up to our counter with condition, and then we're going to link our counter with condition straight into this effect spawner. Now, this counter with condition is set to be equal to 1, and the count starts at a value of 0 when the game loads. So what happens is every time I press this button, it's going to go ahead and increment the counter and add a value of 1 to it on this link right here. So this link is set to increment and it will add 1 to our current counter. So if we have a value of 0 in here when the game starts, the first time I press this button, it's going to go ahead and add 1 to our counter. When the counter is equal to 1, which in this time it will be, it will go ahead and then it will go ahead and activate the effect spawner when the condition is passed and then do nothing if we don't have the condition passed. I also want to set this counter to alter on value changes as well so that the condition is evaluated every time a value changes in the counter. Now, if you don't understand too much about how the counter with condition works and you need more details on this, I do actually have a video telling you all about the logic gizmos as well. So if you want a bit more of an understanding about how the counter works, then I would definitely go ahead and recommend checking that one out. Next, what we want to do is currently, if we go into play mode, you'll see that I can only press this once and the effect will go ahead and just go ahead and never go ahead and play again. So you can see that nothing's happening after I press the button. However, what we can do is we can use a timer to essentially reset the value in this counter down to zero so that then we can press the button again and something will happen. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, let's go ahead and take a link from our counter with a condition into our timer. I want to say that when the condition is passed, it will start the timer. And if the condition is failed, we just go ahead and do nothing, right? Because we don't want the timer to stop randomly if we spam the button. Then all we need to do is set our timer. We're going to set it to five seconds so that the player has to wait five seconds before they can press the button again to make something happen. And then we'll go ahead and link this back into the button right here or into our counter right here. And then when the time has elapsed, all we're going to do is we're going to set the counter to have a value of zero. And then essentially this means that this will get a value of zero. So when we press the button again, it'll increment and pass that first time and then go ahead and let us go ahead and do the button. Now, the other thing we might want to do is go ahead and change the color of the button to make sure that the player knows that it's kind of inactive. Because currently, if we press it right now, you can see that, you know, we can spam it, but only every five seconds is it going to go ahead and let us go ahead and play another raw science like that. So as you can see, we've already controlled the rate. But if we want to go ahead and give a bit more information to the player, we can also go ahead and take another link from our counter with condition right here. And we can say that when the condition is passed, we're going to go ahead and customize the button to be a different color. So we'll set it, we'll set the color to be a bit different like this. And then finally, when this time has gone ahead and elapsed, we can go ahead and also set the button to go back to its default state like that with factory defaults. So what we should find now is that when we go ahead and press the button, you should see that we press it and it changes to green. And then you can see that after five seconds, the button will then go back to red, indicating that we can go ahead and press it again. Whenever the button is green, we can spam it as much as we like. But as you can see, that effect is no longer playing. So essentially, you can use timers to control the rate at which buttons or even things like switches and other triggers can be activated or interacted with via a player. So they are super useful for doing stuff like that, too. Sometimes you might want to have a timer that goes for longer than 60 or 90 seconds. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a few different ways. First of all, let's start with the most simple way, but probably the way that is also prone to random errors kind of ruining your day if you fire several signals to it. Now, usually what you would do is you link a button to your timer. So just like this, 
and we're going to go ahead and set that button to go ahead and start it and then your timer will go ahead and then on time elapsed it will go ahead and activate whatever you wanted it to activate in this case it's an effect spawner now this timer is currently set to three seconds for demonstration purposes but if you were to set this up to 60 seconds obviously you could make things last longer what you can do is you can actually make a timer link directly into another timer just like this so if i was to go ahead and duplicate this timer and then link this one into this guy right here and then link this guy into here i can make it so that this timer will start when the last one elapses you have to make sure it's at the start timer and not toggle timer that's also very important and then we can go ahead and try this out so you'll see now that if i go ahead and press this button you'll see that three seconds passes here and then another three seconds passes here and then it will go ahead and trigger the effect spawner which is really good however this method is kind of prone to errors and let me show you with a slightly longer chain of timers so what we're going to do is we're going to go and make a longer chain of timers like this and then i'm going to make this one go ahead and start the next one in the chain and then we'll go ahead and make that trigger the effect now this one will last nine seconds but if you were to put each of these to a 60 second timer with a 30 second delay it would essentially give you four and a half minutes of time before this activated obviously you don't want to watch this thing tick up for four and a half minutes so you know that's why we're making it shorter but what we can do now is you'll see that if i was to go ahead and do this it would go ahead and activate this first one and then after three seconds it activates the second one and then after three seconds it goes ahead and activates the third one just like that and everything seems fine right however what happens if i activate the first one i activate the second one and then as the third one's activating i go ahead and press this button you can see that we're going to get the first one after nine seconds but then the second tick is only going to come after about eight or so seconds because we let one activate so as you can see there wasn't a there was a nine second delay between when i pressed the button and when it happened there but all these timers hadn't elapsed before the next one was allowed to begin now there is a simple way you can go ahead and solve that however and that is on use of a counter with condition between your button and these timers so remember how i said you can use a counter with condition and a timer together to go ahead and make it so that a button can only be activated a certain amount of times so essentially what we're going to do is we'll make it so that when this thing is equal to one it goes ahead and starts the timer but if it fails it just does nothing when we press this button we increment this thing by one every time so essentially now we can only press this button once to have this start the timers. Now obviously if we wanted to activate again and not have it just as a single use activation, we can go ahead and link this back into here. And I'm going to have to move my counter over so we can see the links a bit. But then we just say once the time has elapsed, it goes ahead and then sets the value of the counter back down to zero. Finally, we'll go ahead and make this counter evaluate on value changes so that we can go ahead and be sure that it activates. Now what we should find is if I go ahead and then activate this, you'll see that I can't go ahead and press this button anymore until this entire thing has gone and passed. So once this thing has gone and passed and the effects wanna goes off, then I can go ahead and activate my button again. So that's one way you could go ahead and use to fail safe at these kind of things. Now, obviously, as this thing gets longer and longer, as you're adding more and more time, you can imagine that it's gonna get a little bit more cumbersome to work with, especially if you want to make a lot of these kind of things for your circuits. So I'm gonna show you another setup, which is essentially gonna allow your timer to essentially go for, <laughs> for up to 600 minutes. So let's go ahead and get to the next example where I will show you that. In order to make a super long timer, the first thing we're gonna to need to do is obviously have a button to go ahead and activate the thing. So let's go ahead and put this down right here. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put a timer down over here. And we're gonna set this thing for now just to be active on one second. We don't want it to start on play, but this one we want to repeat and we want to go ahead and show it while it's playing. Then we're gonna link this button straight into this timer, just like that. And this button is simply going to go ahead and start the timer just like that. Okay, that's the easy part. Now we're gonna need two counterweight conditions like this. We're gonna go ahead and set one counterweight condition here and one counterweight condition just here. Now, it's very important that these are evaluated on value changes and these values are higher than one, at least the first one. We're gonna set these both to two for now, but you'll see how this changes in a minute. So we're gonna set these both to two, and then we're gonna make it so that this timer is gonna link into this first counter right here. So once the timer elapsed, it's going to increment that counter. Then we're gonna go ahead and make it so that this counter links into this one, and when the condition is passed, it's going to go and increment this counter up by one. All right. So essentially what this is going to do is every second this counter is going to go up by one and when it's equal to two it's going to then increment this one 
However, we want to make sure that then this one resets back to zero when this counter goes ahead and increments. So in order to do that, all we need to go ahead and do is make it so that this guy here, we need to make sure it's also evaluated on value changes. We're going to make it so that when this one essentially passes or fails, it's going to go ahead. Well, when it passes, we don't want anything to happen, right? So nothing's going to happen on a pass. But if it goes ahead and fails its condition, we're going to go ahead and set the value of this counter back down to zero. So essentially, it's going to count at one and then two. And then when this hits two, this is going to then turn into one, which technically isn't equal to two. So then this thing goes ahead and then resets itself, right? And that will go back down to zero. Then next second, it will go back to one. The next second, it will go back to two. And then it will go to two here. And then it will go ahead and pass its condition. Then what we need to do is go ahead and add a switch gate right over here. I'm going to put it uh, probably just put it like over here because it's a bit clearer to see. And we're going to link this counter into this switch gate. When it goes ahead and passes, it's going to activate the switch gate. But if it fails, it's not going to do anything to this switch gate. Then what we want to do is we want to set this switch gate so that essentially when it goes ahead and passes, it's going to activate the condition that we want to have. So let's go ahead and say there's an effect spawner here. I'm going to put it at the end of this chain. And then when the switch activates, it will go ahead and it will go ahead then and activate our effect spawner just like that. Now, what we need to do is we need to make it so that after a little bit of time, this thing will reset and let us do it again. So for that, we're going to need, you guessed it, a second timer just here. So we're going to go ahead and put a second timer just over here. We're going to set this to one second and to not start on play. And we'll also make it show while playing so you can see what happens as we go. This timer essentially is going to get started when the switch activates. So when the switch activates, it will start the timer and then it won't do anything when the switch deactivates. Then we're going to go ahead and fire the timer back into the switch and we're going to make this timer deactivate the switch once it's elapsed. And then when the switch is deactivated, we want to go ahead and stop this timer and then reset all the signals. So we want to go ahead and stop this timer first. So we'll go ahead and do that one. So we'll set this one to stop timer once it's activated. And then this guy here, we just need to link essentially back into this counter right over here. And when it is linked into this counter, actually, we could probably set it to uh, we could probably set it on to set value on condition passed as well. That's actually a good idea. So we'll set it to value zero on condition passed. And then all we need to do is set this one to go ahead and set the value to zero, thus resetting the counters. This one will already be reset, but this one will go ahead and reset afterwards. Now, essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to take these two values and then multiply them and then give us the output after that amount of time has passed. This is set to one second, right? So if we do that, this. We'll go ahead and press this now. And what we should find is after four seconds, this thing goes ahead and activates, then that thing triggers the timer off. And again, we press it again. And then what we should find is after four seconds, it goes ahead and does that. Now, this is where the powerful part comes in. If we go ahead and set this timer now to 60 seconds, it's going to take four minutes for this entire thing to go. If we then go ahead and set these counters up to both values of 10, that's going to take 60 seconds times 10 times 10. Essentially, a timer this long will only elapse after 6,000 seconds. So with a fairly simple setup like this, you can get an extremely long timer to use for things like creature respawns or something like that. So remember, the input to your system is from the button and the output to your system is this effect spawner right over here. So essentially, you can then go ahead and have a single input controlling this and then it's any, any amount of outputs you want to happen after that. And you can use this to make an extremely long timer without having to do extreme amounts of chain setups on all your timers. Because as you can see, when we set up some chain setups over here, if we wanted a 6,000 second timer, we'd literally have to make 100 of these in the chain, which is not so good. But a setup like this, with this timer at 60, and both of these two at 10, will essentially allow you to make a very, very long timer, which could be useful for certain things. For example, if you wanted creatures to respawn after a certain amount of time, you could use something like this to get a really long timer. If you wanted to increase the length even further, however, you could do, essentially, all you would have to do is make it so you would uh, move another counterweight condition in a row after this if you needed longer than 6,000 seconds. I'm sure there might be some situations where you might, but you could essentially expand that circuit and make it a little bit longer. So let's go test this with some creature spawns. And I can show you how you would use this to make your world respawn some creatures after a certain amount of time. For our final example, let's go ahead and adapt this to make it into a creature respawner which can use a very, very long time if we need to. 
The first thing we always need is to actually have a creature spawner. So let's go ahead and put one down and I'm going to go ahead and put it essentially right over here. And for now, let's go ahead and make it spawn in a worker ant. Now, obviously, if we want our creatures spawned at the beginning of the game, you could just go ahead and this is what I'm going to do and set up a timer right over here. And we're going to set it to one second. We want it to start on play, but we don't want it to repeat. This essentially is going to spawn in our creature once that one second of time has passed and everything is going to work here. I'm going to go ahead and actually put this in front and I'm going to move this time to the front right here. So then what we need to do is we need to set it so that once the creature has been killed, it then waits and then respawns the creature. So how do we do that? Well, all we need to do is essentially this button and this link controls the input, right? So what we can do is instead of having a button here, we can link the death of our creature to this timer. And then we can go ahead and make it start the timer just like that. There we go. So now once the creature's died, it's going to go ahead and start this timer. I've actually reduced it to one second here just for quickness. And I've done this from two to four. So this should give us an eight second timer right over here. And then the output, once this thing is done, is based on this switch, right? And then we, we want to make it so that when the switch turns on, instead of spawning an effect here, we want it to go ahead and respawn a new creature. So we're going to go ahead and turn it to spawn creatures when this thing is turned on. And obviously when it's turned off, we don't want it to do anything, right? Because there's that one second delay will obviously, will obviously despawn it. Then we'll go ahead and just remove the effect spawner. And just like that, we now have a creature spawner that will then respawn after a certain amount of time. And you can make this respawn time very, very long if you want to. So now what we should find is a worker ant will spawn in. I'll go ahead and do that. You can see now it should take about eight seconds. So there we go. There's the uh, there's the counters going like that. There's the eight seconds. Then it goes ahead and does that. And there you go. Another creature has been respawned. We go ahead and do it again. And you can see after another eight seconds, what we should go ahead and find is the next creature will come ahead and spawn in just after that, which is really good. And there we go. We've now got this thing essentially so that it respawns just like that. And as you can see, that is a way you can set up a creature spawner, because if we were to, for example, set this first timer back to 60 seconds and then set this, say if we wanted a creature to respawn, say, every, I don't know, let's just let's just say like every hour, right? So that's currently set to 60 seconds right there. And then if we turn this to 10, that's going to make it up to 600 seconds. Right now, 600 seconds obviously is just 10 minutes, right? So then we need to go ahead and then set this to six like this and then six times 10. So that's a minute. And then six times 10 gives you 60 minutes, right? And that will go ahead and make a creature respawn after 60 minutes of time has passed. Now, what you can go ahead and do as well is you can make it so that there's multiple respawns over a long time. Now, there is um, currently there's no way that we can go ahead and reset the timer unless we go ahead and make this fire a switch off event into these. But it will also do some weird stuff with the counters. So if you want to do a reset, you'll probably have to like use a transmitter and receiver on both of these counters and this timer to make it stop. For example, if you wanted to do that, and obviously reset the switch out. But that is a bit beyond the scope of this. What we're going to do is if we wanted several creatures to spawn and then have a cooldown, we could go ahead and then start like this. And then we could just duplicate these spawners just like this. So then the timer initially will spawn in three worker ants. We can go ahead and like kill all these guys off like this. So we'll go ahead and like try not to get destroyed. And then you can see, there we go. Now that we've killed these guys, this timer is slowly but surely kicking in. And then after this has gone past, after this timer of one minute has elapsed 60 times, because remember, six times 10 in our counter here is actually 60, right? So once these 60 seconds have elapsed 60 times, it will go ahead then and trigger the creatures to respawn into the world after 60 minutes, which is super good. So now we have creatures spawning when the player comes into the world, and they're also respawning. <laughs> they're also respawning after a certain amount of time. So as you can see, just by using a little bit of logic like this, it may look a bit confusing at this stage, so I'm going to just remove those other two spawners. But just by using a very small circuit like this, you can make extremely long timers and it's really really good and that is how you can go ahead and use timers to their full potential especially for things like creature spawns if you want to mimic what the main game of grounded is like when it comes to those kind of things and just like that guys we have now reached the end of our tutorial on timers i hope you guys found this really useful and hopefully now you can see even more ways to use timers to their full potential if you guys were struggling on some of the other gizmos and gadgets that I used throughout this one, be sure to check out the mega tutorial video 
on grounded playgrounds. I've set a link to that in the description. You can also go ahead and take a deep dive into some other circuits and stuff that I've made by going into the gizmo left tutorial where I do cover the counterweight condition and switch gizmos used in this circuit right here in a little bit more detail. So if you didn't understand why this worked or how each of these other gizmos work, then please go ahead and check out those other tutorials on my Gizmo Labs playlist. And of course, if you do have any requests of things you'd like me to try and make as a tutorial, please go ahead and let me know because honestly, I love making this stuff. And finally, if you haven't already, please go ahead and feel free to join on our Discord as well so that you can go ahead and submit any of your playgrounds if you want to, because we also have a link there for people to submit playgrounds as well. So please go ahead and do that if you want to go ahead and have me try out some of your maps. But guys, that's going to be all from me for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. So until then, bye!